إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة. During the time of Musa, Prophet Musa عليه السلام, there was a major drought. So much so that the people were coming to Prophet Musa عليه السلام and asking him to supplicate to Allah. They said the elders are suffering and the children are starving. And the animals were dying, and the trees, and the harvest, everything is shriveling up. So supplicate to Allah, so that He may send down rain for us. And so Prophet Musa alayhi salam ordered the people to gather in an open area. All of Bani Israel were ordered to gather in one, in one open area. And he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask him to send down rain. And he said, Oh Allah, the elders are suffering, the children are starving, the animals are dying, and the plants are shriveling up. So send this rain by your mercy, O oh Allah. And so Prophet Musa alayhi salam looked up at the sky and the heat increased. Nothing happened. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then 
told Prophet Musa alayhi salam, and he said, Oh Musa, there's a servant amongst you in the congregation. For 40 spring years he has disobeyed me. Tell him to leave the congregation and I will send down rain. And so, Prophet Musa alayhi salam announced to the people, whoever, so whoever this person is, please leave the congregation because our elders are, 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 our elders are weak and the animals are dying and the children are starving. So leave the congregation. So the person who heard this who was that person that Allah subhanahu wa mentioned? He looked left and he looked left right and nobody left and he knew he was that person. He knew he was no other than himself. And so he took his garments and he covered his head and he started to cry and supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked Allah subhanahu for forgiveness. And so as soon as the tears came down from his face, from his eyes, the rain also came down with it. And so Prophet Musa alayhi salam noticed that the rain had come, but nobody left the congregation. And so he said, Ya Allah, why did you send down rain? Nobody left the congregation. And so he said, I sent down rain because of that same person. Because he repented and he was sorrowful. And he was remorseful. And so Prophet Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, show us this repenting servant of yours. And so Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him and said, O oh Musa, for 40 straight years he was disobedient to me and I didn't let anyone know. And now that he's repented, do you think I'm going to tell you who he is? And so this is an example of somebody who wanted to change and who was remorseful for what he did. And tears were coming down because of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his mercy upon him and upon the people. As Muslims, we always speak about repentance. What is repentance? And how do you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In the Arabic language, we have the word tawbah, and we have istighfar. What is it? What's the difference between the two? What is the difference? The difference between the two is this istighfar is something that you say verbally, and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. But tawbah is the actual changing of your attitude, your lifestyle, and coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in being the best that you can. That's what tawbah is. And when it comes to repenting and asking Allah subhanahu for forgiveness, you have to take that step to change. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us of a man who had killed 99 people. And then he was remorseful, the burning desire to repent within his heart. And so he was searching for the most knowledgeable person because he wanted to change and he wanted to return to Allah. And so he came, he was shown a man. And so he asked him, and he said, I have, I have killed 99 people. Is there repentance for me? Can I repent? And so he said, 99 people? No. So he killed them also, and he completed 100. And if he wants to do between 99 and 100, he's already killed 99. And if Allah, there's no hope for forgiveness, what, what's the difference? what difference does it make? So he killed her. But you know what? He still wanted to change. And so he was still seeking the most knowledgeable person that he could find. And he was shown a scholar, a man who had knowledge. And so he went to him. And he said, is there repentance for me? I have killed 99 people, and then I killed one more. And he told them what had happened. And Honestly, if you told me what happened, I would have said yes also. And who would have said no? But then, of course, that's the correct answer is yes. And so he said, what's there between you and Allah? There's nothing between you and Allah if a person 
is truly repenting and wants to change. But there's a condition. And you have to change. I mean, you have to move from the place, the, the, the village or the town of the bad people where you live in, to the other town of the good people, if you really want to change. And so, that's what he did. He was on his way to the town of the good people, and he died halfway. Exactly halfway, he died. And so the angel of mercy came down, and the angel of punishment also came down. And both of them were trying to take him. The angel of mercy said he came repenting, and so I have the right to take him. And the other, the angel of punishment said he, had, he, he hasn't done a good thing yet. He hasn't done a good deed. And he hasn't completed his, he hasn't moved past, he hasn't gone to the other town yet. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a man, an angel, that came in the form of a man, and that angel said, he mediated, he was mediator between them. And he said, why don't you measure the land? Whichever of the two towns he's closer to, then you take him. And so they measured. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the earth to shorten the distance between himself, between that man, and the town of the good people. And the angel of mercy took him. And so this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this miracle that the, that the earth itself shrunk the distance shrunk so that the angel of mercy can take him. And so whatever situation, or whatever, whatever case, whatever circumstances, whatever you have done before, there's always repentance. But make that change and make that step. Take that step to change. Not just say, Astaghfirullah only. Not just make it make istighfar. For indeed the Prophet himself, he said, indeed I make istighfar and tawbah. I make this far and I make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hundred times a day. Istighfar is asking Allah, is that tawbah is making that conviction. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa setting us an example for us. He himself, whom Allah has already forgiven his past and future sins. Already! He makes istighfar and tawbah a hundred times a day. How many times have we done that so far today? Ask ourselves right now. And so, when we make repent, when we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and make that conviction to change. Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always there and He's happy with our repentance. And in fact, don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Because when we lose hope in the mercy of Allah, and nobody loses hope in the mercy of Allah except disbelievers, except all the kafirun, except the kufar, not Muslims. Why? Because when a person loses hope in Allah, it's like him, it's like he's saying, Ya Allah, my sins are so great, your mercy can't encompass it. A'udhu billah. There's always repentance. But make that change and make that step, take that step to change. Not just say astaghfirullah only. Not just make it make istighfar. For indeed the Prophet sallallahu himself, he said, indeed I make istighfar and tawbah. Wa atubu ilayhi fil yawm mi'at umar. I make istighfar and I make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a hundred times a day. Istighfar is asking Allah. Is that tawbah is making that conviction. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's setting us an example for us. He himself, whom Allah has already forgiven his past and future sins. Already! He makes his tifar and a hundred times a day. How many times have we done that so far today? Ask ourselves right now. And so, when we make repent, when we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't want us to make the intention to say, you know, tomorrow I will be better. No. You make that intention that tomorrow you will be the best. You will be the best. He didn't say, I will be a better Muslim. No. He said, I will be the best Muslim. And so he became the best Muslim. And so that's why, for us, don't say, 
Inshallah tomorrow. Inshallah after I make Hajj. Inshallah after I pay, finish up my mortgage. Inshallah after I graduate. No. That conviction and that tawbah should be now. Tomorrow, you will be the best. And right now, when the shaitan comes to you and says, you know what, just pray at home. You tell the shaitan. And you say, oh shaitan, ya Allah, oh enemy of Allah. The best Muslim, where would he be right now? He's in the masjid and I'm that best Muslim. I'm going to be in the masjid. And I'm reading the I'm learning my deen and I'm going to be the best. And that's how we all should be. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfiru hadhi wa lakum wa astaghfiru inna huwa wa lakum wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa la aqibatu lil muttaqeen wa la aqibatu lil muttaqeen wa la وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون إنه يغض سمبري يمنع منك أن تحبي and we all claim we all say we love Allah سبحانه if we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with us also. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that Allah is more happy towards his repenting servant than he is towards a person who is in the middle of the desert and he has lost his camel where all the livelihood is on his camel, water and drinks, and everything is on that camel. You know, if you're in the middle of a desert and you've lost your, the water and you have a long ways to go, you don't have much hope. And so this person has lost everything. And he's just waiting, he has no, he doesn't have any hopes of finding that camel. And so he sits down waiting for death to come, resting on the tree. And then he falls asleep. And he wakes up. And he sees his camel right in front of him. And he is so happy. He says, Ya Allah, you are my servant and I am your Lord. Out of happiness, he makes a mistake. A slip of the tongue, he says, Ya Allah, you are my servant and I, I am your Lord. Because he's so happy. Imagine a person who has been told that he has cancer. That you have two weeks to live. And then, for a whole ten days, he's all the only thing he's thinking about is death. And then the the doctor comes and says, you know, there was a misdiagnosis. You don't have cancer. Imagine how happy that person is. Imagine if you were in that situation, how happy would you be? You know, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is much more happy towards his servant than those people. That they think that they're gone and they're just given a second chance. Don't you want to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy? So they repent to Allah, make tawbah, and return to Allah. Let me tell you another story, and I'll end it with this inshallah, of another great scholar by the name of Malik ibn Dinar. Do you know Malik ibn Dinar was also known for his piety and righteousness? And if you don't know the names of these scholars, Look them up, and you'll see their sayings. These were people who were known for their piety and righteousness. He was also very, uh, he wasn't so righteous, let's say, at the beginning of his life. During his youth, he used to be an alcoholic. He said, I was a guard. I used to work as a guard. And I was an alcoholic. And I had a daughter. He married her, slave her, and he had a daughter from her. He said, I loved her very much. You know, and she grew up until she became at that age where she's crawling. You know, like that age, you're a baby, and you're a kid, it's like you love him so much. And he said, every time I used to drink, my baby would come and always knock over the cup or the glass when I used to drink. He was an alcoholic. 
And so, one day, I came back home, and I was told that she had passed away. And I was so sad. Guess what an alcoholic does when he's really sad? He goes and drinks more. So he said, I left. I didn't come back until I shot. And I didn't pray Isha that night. That night, I just went to sleep. And I don't know, during those days, even alcoholics pray. So. <laughs> he said, I didn't even pray Isha. During the, during the night, I didn't even pray Isha. I went to sleep. And then I even had a dream that it was the day of judgment. And everyone was coming out of their grave. And everybody was there. But there was a snake, a big humongous black snake that was chasing me. So this serpent was only chasing me. And so I started to run and run and run. And then I saw an old man from a, in a distance dressed in all white. And I went to him, I said, old man, can you help me? And he said, what can I do for you? I'm so weak and frail. I can't help you against that humongous serpent. And so I took off and I ran and ran again until I came across a pit. And I was almost about to fall in it. And then there was a voice coming from that pit and it said, Oh Malik, you're not amongst that. you're not amongst these people. And so I turned around and I went back to the old man and the old man said, Oh man, help me. I see it. there was nobody there except for that old man. The old man said, I can't help you. I'm so weak and frail. But if there's any help, go behind that mountain, it will be there for you. And so I rushed to the mountain with the snake chasing me, and I saw a group of children playing, and then the children started to say, Who well, does anybody know this man? And so my daughter came from amongst them, crawling out, and I picked her up, and she said, Alam amanu Isn't it time for the believers to have their hearts tremble in the reverence of Allah? Isn't it time? So I looked at my daughter and I said, Daughter, you know how to read, you know how to talk, you know how to read the Quran. And so she said, Father, we here understand the Quran better than you. <laughs> and so the daughter, then the father, Amalek of Dinah, he said, The last snake is chasing me. And so the daughter said, Shh. Did this with her hands, and the serpent left. And so he asked his daughter, and he said, what's all of this? And his daughter said, Father, that, that snake, that was your, those were your bad deeds. You had so much of it. It was chasing you to the hellfire. It was going to bring you to the hellfire. But Father, you're not amongst them. You're not amongst them. And so, he, he said, she said, and that old man, those were your good deeds. You had so few of it. It's so frail and weak. It can't help you. It can't help you. So he woke up and he changed. He took a shower and he went to the masjid. He, be, he always studied and stayed with the great scholar until he became Malik in the Dinar. The scholar, the pious servant, known for his piety and righteousness. And these people, when they repented to Allah, they didn't say, Inshallah, I will be better tomorrow. They said, Inshallah, I will be the best. And Allah loves the Hassan. And Allah loves it when you do that. If you want to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pleased with us, this is the way to do it. Repent to Allah, change. Everyone here should have that conviction right now. Inshallah, I will be not the, a better Muslim, but the best Muslim in Rochester, New York. And when it's time to pray, where is the best Muslim in Rochester? Where is he? Is he sitting down watching football? I don't think so. Allahumma fill the Muslimin and Muslimat. Amen. Wal Mu'minin and Wal Mu'minat. Amen. Wal Ahya'i minhum wal Amwat. Amen. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaaha. Amen. Wa zakiha anta khayru min zakaaha. Amen. Anta waliyuha wa maulaaha. ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة 
وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداءك اعداء الدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وأرخم السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قال